Hey everyone, Josh here. And first of all, I wanna give a big thank you and shout out for Juintech for letting me be one of the hosts on this channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about how I use the Crane 2S gimbal on my shoots. Now, things are slowly getting back to normal, so I started shooting with my clients again, and one of them being Mike O'Hearn. So from that footage, I hope you could tell that Mike O'Hearn is in fact a power bodybuilder. He lifts a tremendous amount of weight, and he is a massive fitness fanatic with tons of knowledge in the game. So I use the Crane 2S gimbal to help me capture a lot of the shots, and this made it so much better when comparing it to handheld. Obviously, there's a tool for everything, but for a lot of fitness shoots that require different angles, especially walking and tracking shots, a gimbal is a must have. But with the Crane 2S, you can see a lot of the different angles that I'm trying to get, and a lot of different gimbal modes are being used as well, especially when it comes down to the transition shots. So for example, I use the vortex mode to help create a cool spinning transition going from one location to the next. Some other transitions involve a simple wipe transition, and this is basically a walking profile shot while I use the PF or pan follow mode. For those of you who are not familiar, pan follow only controls the pan movement, the tilt movement will stay locked and it will not move up and down. Now for the slide or wipe tracking transition, I used mainly either lock mode or pan follow mode. Lock mode locks all of the axes so it does not follow your hands movements on the gimbal. Pan follow mode locks only the tilt axis, but the pan is still following your movements. I tried to work between these two modes because sometimes lock mode performed better than pan follow, and pan follow would sometimes perform better than lock mode. In a lot of my fitness videos with clients, I love to incorporate foreground. Foreground will not only help you with depth, but it will also help you with movement. It's kind of hard to tell if the camera is moving on a wide angle lens if you don't have foreground. And believe it or not, the floor can be used as foreground as well, especially when you're in low angle mode. It's also important to turn off the autofocus on your camera if you're using a lot of foreground and if it takes up most of the frame in the beginning or at the end of the shot. And that's because your camera will be very confused in autofocus mode when deciding what should be in focus. Now along with those movements, I also did what was called an orbit, and what I did with this orbit shot is I tried to transition from one location to the next. So make sure that when your client or talent is in the shot that you tell them not to move. Also, try to keep your client in the middle of the frame while using your grid lines. Now if you notice, with the Crane 2S, I never flip the gimbal upside down to go into low angle mode, I simply tilt it forward. That's because I lowered the rear roll motor right here to 45 degrees. This is an option that you can do with the Crane 2S. So I hope this video has showed you how important a gimbal can be during some of your shoots and how you can get different shots, different angles, and overall different transitions too. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, and I will see you in another video.